Okay, we're joined now by Shireen Nasser. She's an associate professor of psychology at Cleveland State University and has worked extensively in the occupied West Bank. She joins us from Cleveland, Ohio. A very warm welcome to you. It's uh, almost tragically ironic, really, that, of course, wherever children are, children remain children, even in the midst of a war. Um, unusual to see, of course, them fashioning guns out of what they find on the streets. What, why are they doing this? How are they making sense of what they're seeing? Children use play as a way to understand the world around them. So it's actually not surprising that if this, if significant part of their life is experiencing this violence from an occupying army, that they're going to replicate that in order to better understand it, to understand their own circumstances and try to work it out. I mean, as a psychologist, how do you even begin unraveling the depth of trauma that these young children experience? You know, there's um, a psychiatrist, Dr. Samah Jabbar, she says that the word trauma that comes from the Western lens is almost unusable in trying to understand the Palestinian experience, particularly for young Palestinian children. Um, the way that it will impact them is not only in their mental health, which is what people first kind of think of, but also in their physical health moving forward. There's extensive research showing the exposure to trauma and things like cancer, diabetes, um, and other even unexplained health conditions moving forward. So to, to try to delve into what this means in the long term, when we talk about rebuilding for Palestinians, it's not just putting up new buildings, but it's also the internal um, work that we need to do to heal that trauma moving forward. What happens, of course, when, I mean, from the outset, fear and suffering are amongst these children's earliest memories? As you said there, they, they're lifelong scars, aren't they? They are lifelong scars. And I think what's particularly notable, so a lot of my work has been in understanding, understanding trauma post-disaster. And what we know in students or kids who experience these disasters is that there is a particular relevance to a man-made disaster. Because when a student, when a child experiences trauma, the first thing it does is they lose their sense of stability. There's a loss of a sense of security and it changes their worldview, how they think of the world. And when there is a man-made disaster, one that we know can be preventable, that becomes a part of this child's worldview moving forward. So it's not even that, you know, fear, because fear and and um, this violence might be part of their first memories, but they'll also have love and um all the memories that they'll make, good memories that they'll make as part of their worldview. But in particular, when we think about the exposure to these kinds of man-made um, violences and traumas that can be prevented, mm. that is now going to become the way they think of the world moving forward. Right, and that, of course, is the cruelty of it all. That It is very much a man-made phenomena, isn't it? I mean, where would you, as a psychologist, even begin, I mean, it's a probably overused phrase, but the, the road to healing, the path to recovery, if it's at all possible? It has to stop with an end to occupation and bombing. As psychologists, we can't talk about healing and better mental health without improving the conditions, restoring that sense of security and safety for these youth. Only then can we really start to talk about what does it mean to build mental health and wellness? What does it mean to, to build um, physical health and wellness? Because the two are so connected. Ultimately, as psychologists or anyone interested in supporting these kids and a long-term future, we have to start with understanding the conditions they're in and rectifying those. All right, Shireen Nasser, Professor of Psychology at Cleveland State University. Many thanks uh, for joining us. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.